Right, okay. A couple of quick words before we start. This is nothing like anything else on my channel. It's semi-scripted things, uh, semi-professional. Um, my video, my filming style is gorilla style, where everything's done cheaply and quickly. Come on, dog. And um, on the move. So, this is nothing like anything else on the channel. So I hope you like it. Oh, by the way, the sound's rubbish because I had separate sound running and I lost it. So you're gonna have to listen to the sound that was caught on the phone because I film everything with my phone and gorilla style. So we're right outside of a prison. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it's a collaboration with a friend of mine called Spiro who runs a channel called WA UK Wilderness Adventures UK, and um, he's a good lad. He's gonna tell us all about his um, Overlander trailer that he's put together. It's a cracking piece of little kit. I like that. Anyway, it's going to be good. Well, I think it's good. I hope you give it a thumbs up. And uh, and if you're my subscriber, go over to Spiro's channel, WAUK, and subscribe to him. And if you're from his channel, hello to you lot. Guys and girls, girls and guys. Finn, say hello. Hello, everyone. So, yeah, enjoy. Bye-bye. <laughs> does it take two minutes three minutes I beat the kettle uh, all we have to do now is get a couple of chairs out sit back drink a brew reminisce plan our next outing and as I said earlier in the video Leon's gonna do a bit of an interview ask me a few questions on the trailer so make sure you go over because you know I might have forgot something that he's, he's thought of to ask um, so it could be quite educational so that quick that easy especially when you know what you're doing Leonard's over there, it feels. See. Bye, Leonard. You want a Easy peasy. Job well done. It's brew time now. So, tell them what you use it for. I suppose it's... I use it for glamping, really. Um, obviously, it's been built for SHTF scenarios. Um, whether I believe that's ever going to happen or not is a different matter. It's a whole different episode, that. Um, but I use it for camping, going to various meets up and down the country. When we were at Edale, we were all, I say we, me and several friends. There was about seven of us all camped under it. I mean, go and watch my Edale video if you haven't seen it, it's on my channel. And um, yeah, we were keeping dry and warm. I had a little stove in, I had the sides on. So, so it's just a shelter, it's somewhere where people can congregate when the weather goes bad. But I just use it to get away from the world, really. Get away from the rat race. Mm. I, don't, I, I, I don't think there's anything better than hitching it up to the Land Rover, heading out into a quiet field, be it a paid campsite or somewhere you've got permission or not, or whatever the case may be. And just setting up for a couple of days and just getting away from it all. I love it. Just being alone with your thoughts. So, with it being such a big project, if you had to do it all again, would you change anything? What would you do different? Oh, you went there. What would I do different? Mm. Do you know, I've recently refurbished it, so everything I wanted to change, I kind of changed. I suppose I'd like to... Something I was looking at the other day, I'd, li I'd like to put an onboard water tank on it. Yeah. Uh, whether that goes underneath, which in theory it needs to because of the centre of gravity and stuff, it can't go above. Um, so, so yeah, some some sort of water, water bowser or something, only small, I don't know, 30 litre or something, it could carry on board all the time. You could use for washing and stuff and then you just have to carry drinking water. Yeah. Um, it's always been on my mind, do I need heating in there? Um, I have a little fishing stove that I carry, but I'm always very aware of carbon monoxide poisoning and carbon monoxide. Um, 
and it's very warm in there anyway. Yeah, I was going to ask, what about the insulation? What, what did you use for that? But when Rich built it, he built it out of, um, I think it's alloy composite. So it's aluminium basically. Uh, aluminium sheets, it's non-magnetic. Uh, and then you've got a, a layer of Kingspan, which you can just see here. Oh, yeah. And then you've got a, a thin layer of ply as well on top. Um, it's not got much ventilation, it has got a roof vent. But that's the only ventilation, so it does get quite warm in there. Question, I would say, what was it originally before you got your hands on it? Right, well, I got it in a box form. Prior to that, it belonged to a friend of mine, Bug Out Vehicles UK. If you aren't subscribed to Rich, obviously always go over to Rich and check him out. He's a, a lot more seasoned YouTuber, shall we say. Um, but he got it as a military Sankey trailer. Right. So it's meant to be like a flatbed put your garden waste in, tow to the tip on a Sunday for soldiers, basically. So what was that like, carrying ammo and things like that? Carrying ammo, carrying radio equipment, some of them had water bowsers built into them, just for obviously towing stuff out to the troops in the field. Right. So, how does she tow? What's she like on the motorway? Do you know what? Because it's the same wheelbase as a Land Rover, it follows it. I've never had it wobbling or obviously it's all down to loading as well. I try to distribute the weight evenly. Whatever I put in the front, I put in the back. But it tows really well. You don't even know it's there unless you're hitting a big hill. My little Land Rover struggles <coughs> with the hills. Um, I'm talking like when you go into the Lake District or when you're going over the Peak District. It struggles with those type of hills. Motorways and stuff. It tows really, really well. You hardly know it's there to be fair. Yeah. What is its overall footprint? You know, the style, far does it come out? What is the length? Big. Big. <laughs> uh, the trailer itself is four foot wide, four foot from the wheel up. So four before and it's eight foot long. Right. Uh, the awning comes out a further eight foot over the camera. So away from the door, eight foot. Sorry, seven foot. Seven foot that way, eight foot that way. Because right. obviously it covers the whole length of the trailer. So it's eight foot wide. Yeah by seven foot long. Um, so you add that to the overall four, you've got 11 foot deep, if you will, from the front to the back, which that's the front and that's the back at the moment. Mm. When you're towing it, that's the front and that's the back. It's confusing this. Yeah. Doesn't matter, there's a skirt that goes along here. Add an extra two minutes to the setup time for that. Yeah, doesn't mean it doesn't wear it on him. <laughs> it goes along here. <laughs> Stop the wind blowing. <laughs> Not that wind. <laughs> right. <coughs> How does it manage in the weather? Obviously it's sunny now, but when uh, we are in England and you know what happens in England, so play away. I've had it out in some bad weather. A lot of you will have camped with me when I've been out at Edale, for example. Edale this year was probably the worst conditions I've had it in. Not just for the rain, but for the wind as well. Mm. I've obviously done a camp up at the Tan Hill as well, the Tan Hill pub. Uh, that was just rainy all weekend, it wasn't really windy. Uh, when I was down at Edale this year, there was... If none of you have been to Edale, Edale's in like a bowl. It's, it's surrounded by hills, big hills. And it has its own little microclimate. Yeah. And you'll set up and the wind's coming from that direction, so you'll set it with its back towards the wind. But then half an hour later, you know, the wind will be coming towards you. It, it just changes. It, it's really, really weird at Edale. And through the night it picked up and we had gale force winds and it actually collapsed the awning. Um, so I had to get up at five in the morning and just put a ratchet strap round it. Yeah, that's gale force. Yeah, it? that's that's proper gale force. Yeah. It didn't take off, it didn't bend it, it didn't break it. Mm. Just where it joins on the joints on the knuckles, it just blew it apart. So literally... Oh, I just, it popped out. Yeah, yeah, it just popped out. Yeah. So uh, it popped out, fell to the ground, I had to get up in the middle of the night, pop it back in and put a ratchet strap round it in gale force winds, which was a challenge. Mm, I can believe it. But uh, since then, I mean, it's evolved a little bit. There's now guy lines that go down to the ground, proper big thick ones. I've not put them out now. So, I mean, if I wanted to put them, add another minute or two to the setup time. Don't need it today, it's very still. Mm. Um, but yeah, rain doesn't bother it at all. Um, previously, when rain was coming in sideways from the back, 
could get kind of splash back, splash back where it hit the roof and bounce under. Yeah. But now, I mean, you will have seen before when I was unpacking it. There's a there's like a a cover that goes over it for when it's in transit. That goes probably a foot over the roof rack, so it stops the splash back now. So hopefully that should eliminate the splash back that I used to get. You do get a bit of shakage in the trailer when it's gale force winds, but it has got legs on the back that I'm yet to deploy that both Rich and Gareth are making fun of me over. Um, yeah, I was going to say that, but what's the... Um, it has the, got legs. The rear steadiness. Yeah. So yeah. they're on? They, they're on it? Oh, they're on it, yeah, they're, they're already deployed. attached. It's just pull a yeah. pin out and they drop down, basically. But I, I've never done them. But yeah, yeah, I should, because obviously you've got the suspension, when you're led in it, you've got the suspension, the bounce. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's moving on the suspension. If you deployed the legs down, how I've been told to do it is dip the nose as far as possible, put the legs out because obviously they'll be longer because the back end's going to be up in the air yeah and then when you redo the jockey wheel it'll li literally lift the wheels ever so slightly off the ground so it takes the right. suspension out of it right, yeah. so then it'll be a lot more sturdy in winds but again it, yeah. it, it's something you just get used to I've, I've never I've only been out in gale force winds once been out in all sorts of rain how long do you think you could last quite comfortably obviously you're going to take your water with you but you've got solar power as well. What do you think? It's a really good question actually. I probably carry enough food for probably two maybe three weeks comfortably. Oh. That's rice, pasta, dry food. Dry, yeah, dry goods. I carry some tin stuff. Um, I also carry dry beans, uh, lentils, things like that. So again, you just need water to bring it to life. Uh, yeah. I do have water filters, obviously. So, so even if I run out of water, I just I could could quite easily find a water source. Yeah, filter it. Um, and your power, you've got as long as the sun shines, you've got endless power. Yeah. For the, um, the solar panels. Yeah, I've got I've got solar on the roof. I've got 200 watts of solar pa power on the roof. In fact, I've got a battery at home that's just on charge. Uh, I was given, thankfully, comfortably, I'd say I can survive sort of three weeks. Yeah. After that, it would be a case of sourcing carbohydrates and sourcing meat. Meat, I don't think would be a problem. The carbohydrates, I think, would. But yeah, I'd, I'd say three weeks. I, I carry probably three weeks supply on there. Well, I have a question. What is she like towing off-road? Do you know, that is a good question. Um, a lot of people who follow me on my channel will know that I, I'm not massively into off-roading. We go way back. And we used to off-road Land Rovers. Long time ago, We're talking 20, 20 years ago plus. So we have off-roaded. You know, we did pay and play. We did green lanes. We did all sorts when we were younger. I'm kind of past that phase in my life now. Um, I mean, I'm sure Leon will do a pan of this field and show you we've, we've done off-roading coming here. But I'm, you know, I've got no intentions of going to Strata Florida and the Strata Florida, uh, which is obviously a green lane in Wales. Um, to do it. Although it's capable, you know, it, it, it's attached to a NATO hitch on the back of the Land Rover. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, it, it's capable of doing it, you know, I've, I've got no intentions of, of taking it off-road. I'm not going to take my bedroom to a pay and play. No. Um, <laughs> but as far as getting across fields, getting to campsites, you know, we've been at camps before that have become excessively waterlogged. That or pull that off a waterlogged field, no problem at all. It's not a camping home, it's not a caravan. That thing's more than capable, sorry, of pulling that off-road. So, so yes, it will off-road. I've got no intentions of doing it um, unless I have to. Let's put it that way. Unless we're on a campsite or we so get stuck on a campsite. perfectly capable. Hey, perfect, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. right. With that, catty bye. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.